Hello YouTube, it's Vince White. I'm an employment attorney on this channel. We answer publicly posted questions from YouTube users, giving folks the answers they need from an employment attorney for free. Um, trying to have a little fun with it today. Making a lot of videos today. Trying to keep it loose, right? We have a question here from YouTube user just-us. Just the two of us. Ba, 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 ba. Anyways, uh, just us as me. Hi, Vince. It's been a while. It has, I think. Uh, how are you supposed to answer deposition questions in a discrimination case that come from the defendants? Do you just answer the questions, or is this a time to add more to your answer to tell your story? Okay, so quick background on depositions. If you are the plaintiff, in a workplace discrimination case or workplace sexual harassment case, there's a very good chance that if your case does not settle early on, uh, which most do, frankly, but if your case doesn't settle early on, you'll eventually be deposed by the defendants if their attorneys are not asleep at the wheel. Now, this is not to be confused with interrogatories, which are written questions, or document requests, which are lists of uh, documents being requested. This is, in fact, you under oath answering questions either in the room with attorneys or telephonically through video with a court reporter you know typing away or a video transcript or even just live video being taken right that is a thing that many uh, higher end defense attorneys do now they record the entire proceeding and when you're answering questions if you have counsel hopefully you will have been prepped by your attorney as to how they want you to answer. And that's important because your attorney knows you, has been dealing with you, and has some grasp of how you'll be as a witness. Which is why, right off the bat, I'm going to tell you to defer to your counsel as to how you should answer these questions because they know more about you and your case than I do. But I can give you a quick rundown on how I would go about this with my clients. First things first. When you are asked a question by opposing counsel in a deposition, please count to five Mississippi. You're doing this to give your attorney time to hear, digest what has been asked, and if they need to, interrupt. This is key. You will often want or feel compelled to answer quicker to show how certain you are of your answer. Do not do this. You will often think, oh, that's simple. Doesn't matter, I'll answer it quick. Do not do this. Always count to the five Mississippi. If you are a person of great and momentous patience, count to 15. Your attorney, a little bit less experience in the realm of deposition defense, count to 30. What do you care? Think about every question. You're gonna be there all day. So don't, you don't need to give them time to ask more questions, right? Just take your time, answer the question. Now to take it a little bit further, your specific question is, are you supposed to answer deposition questions um, in a fashion that like makes your case? Or do you just answer the question as tightly and succinctly as possible? It depends. I mean, it depends on you and your ability as a witness as judged by third parties, not judged by you. There's an interesting fact about human beings. We're all pretty terrible at knowing how good a witness we are. All of us. And I say that as someone who's been deposed and testified in a couple different litigations, right? I think I'm great. Part of what makes me think I'm great is that sometimes attorneys who are questioning me end up screaming at me and needing to recompose themselves. That to me feels like a win. That to a jury looks like I'm an asshole, <laughs> right? And what I'm really there to do, if I'm, if I'm in front of a jury, if I'm testifying in open court, I'm there to convince the jury of my version of events. Theoretically, I mean, I'm, I'm there to tell the truth, but I'm hoping that I am found credible and believed by the fact finder, the judge, the jury, the arbitrator, whoever that might be. So me enraging the attorney 
questioning me. Mixed bag at best, right? So often, <laughs> I'll be guided to just answer the question. Very, very limited fashion, right? There's also a lot of people who don't really understand their case. They have very good, strong cases, but what they think is a strong piece of evidence in their case is just nonsense. I always, I always give the the gibberish example, right? There's a lot of, there's a lot of people who, if you, as an attorney, talk to them, you're like, okay, so can you tell me why you feel you experience discrimination? They'll say things like. The Porsche was purple. What? What? Oh, okay. Um, why does that make you feel like you experienced discrimination? It's self-evident. The Porsche was purple. Okay. You don't... So I, I, I see some screenshots and text messages here. There's a lot of um, really hateful stuff in there is... I mean, can we talk about that? What do you, like, why is the, is there something about the Porsche that I'm not understanding? Is, is purple like the, the, the color of the mascot of the Sexual Harassers Guild? Like, what are we talking about here? Like, what, why, do, why does this mean something to you? And they'll stare at you like you're the dumbest fucking asshole in the world because it's obvious to them. Just because it's obvious to them doesn't mean they will ever make it obvious to anyone else. It also doesn't mean that it necessarily makes sense. It may. It may. The, the obviousness of it may be the truest thing that has ever done true. But if you can't convince anyone of it, and if it doesn't serve to convince anyone that your version of events is right and correct, it doesn't mean a single thing, right? So there's a lot of ways that a witness going the extra mile, adding to their case in a deposition can run up to that, run astray, can, can kind of damage the case. And most witnesses, you're going to say, listen, add, answer the question with as little detail as you can while being responsive. Make it as tight as you can, right? Like uh, if you're a comedian, like we need a tight five, like get up there, put your jokes out. You got five minutes, get off the stage. If you're a witness, give me your five to thirty Mississippi, whatever you whatever you want to count out, and ask yourself during that period what was the actual question and what is the most responsive, shortest possible answer, the least that I could say, right? Because the deposition is not where you make your case. You can sit down, and create your own affidavit if you want. You don't mean. You don't need to be deposed to create an affidavit. In fact, you're probably going to testify, so you'll be able to share your story that way. Your complaint in this field will generally, usually, often be a sworn statement, which was you, one your attorney, writing down your version of events, and you swearing, yeah, that happened. That thing I said happened did happen. I've sworn to it. You're not going to do better than any of those scenarios for getting your story out in a deposition where you're up against someone who does this for a living, who tries to trip you up, confuse you, get you to say inaccurate things, try to uh, get your story out of time order so it sounds like it's inaccurate, sounds like it's bullpucky, right? Um, and listen, different, different defense attorneys have different levels of talent at deposition. There are defense firms that just have deposition attorneys. There are just people, their entire life is prepping for, and then conducting depositions. That's what they do. They don't litigate cases. They just take a couple of weeks to get ready to depose a person. And then they spend eight hours, or potentially more, depending, trying to torture that person into doing things like getting angry, making mistakes, lying, right? It is not uncommon for someone to badger someone, so a, a defense attorney, to badger a plaintiff so much, that the plaintiff starts to lie. They don't need to lie, their case is fantastic. We wouldn't be representing them if their case wasn't fantastic. But they'll feel the sense of panic and 
I don't know. I feel like I'm losing. I'm losing my case right here. <sighs> I, well, th well, this happened. The fuck it did. Yeah, come here. We're, we're break. Break. My client needs to go to the bathroom. Your client doesn't need to go to the bathroom. Ah, we're going. <sighs> Call eject. We'll be in the bathroom. <laughs> well, what was that? I never heard that before. Yeah. I, I panicked. Okay, well, unpanic. Take a couple of breaths, go back in there, tell them you messed up, you said something that wasn't true, and tell them what actually happened. No, then they'll know I lied. Yeah, they, they know. Everyone knows. We watched it. Everyone, everyone knows. Now you unlie, you accept the harm for what you did, and we do damage control to try to reduce the risk and keep this case moving forward, right? Like, that's, that's what we must do here. We must fix the lie. This is not uncommon. And frankly, in those scenarios, I would tell someone, you know, I've questioned about this, like, well, you said this once, and then you said that wasn't true. Why'd you do that? Oh, uh, that deposition attorney was just uh, so scary. I panicked. Just say it. Just be honest. The beauty of being a plaintiff in this field, a legitimate, sincere plaintiff in this field, is that you must only tell the truth. This simplifies your testimony so much. Lying about a claim in this field is incredibly complex. Very few people could do it. Very few people could survive depositions and do it. I've seen a few, I think. I'm not sure, but I think I've seen a few. But it's rare. It's rare. The average human being has a hard time doing it when they're telling the truth, which is really simple. What happened? This happened. How do you know? I was there. Cool. Thanks. Tight. Keep it tight. Keep it succinct. Um, but there are special witnesses who are just incredible communicators. Used to conflict, used to being attacked. And this is, this is truly, like, this is not like a natural skill. Are there people who might have natural skill in this? Perhaps. But I think this is... This is a practiced and learned skill, right? The most conflict-oriented person in the world will still be less effective at sharing their story and communicating when under attack than they would be otherwise. And the only way to get around that is practice. And if the only practice you've had in the entirety of your life is your prep from your attorney, it's better than nothing. But you're not probably going to be a star and that's okay it's okay that's the attorney's job to prove the case using your testimony to the best that she or he can right but those stars those people who have this conflict this comfort with conflict this practiced style of communication under duress well, those people get prepped real hard because those people start dunking on defense attorneys right and left and it's still a risk i don't care how good you are i don't care how good you are if you're going hard in a deposition you're taking a risk the safest maneuver is always keep it tight keep it succinct just answer the question but there's there's a few people the the rare people who you might prep to, to go hard in the paint and, and that's a thing that happens from time to time rarely though rarely so let me let me reread your question here to see if I've actually answered your question now that I've been speaking for 14 minutes hi Vince it's been a while how are you supposed to answer deposition questions in discrimination case from the defendants N 99 times out of 100 as succinctly as possible do you answer just the questions 99 times out of 100 yes or is this the time to add more to your story, um, to, to share more of your story? 99 times out of 100, no. If you're one out of 100, if you're the one out of 100 witness who has had this conversation with your counsel and feels confident and prepped and well-practiced and capable of, of developing this case in the face of overwhelming practiced attack, then sure, different answers. Usually, five Mississippi or more. Just answer the question. 
get out of there sharing and saying as little as humanly possible. The end. If this was helpful, like, subscribe, comment down below. It helps me to help more people just like you. If I failed to answer your question, or if you're someone else who's follow-up questions on depositions, post down below. I will try to make follow-up content videos. It occurs to me that I probably don't have too much deposition prep content on this channel, and that could be really valuable. So I should probably get on that. Take care, everybody.